Welcome to our chapter about cellular respiration. So this is a technical chapter. It's not the easiest. I'm not going to lie to you, but um, it's an important one. It's what's keeping us alive. And it's the whole reason that we're breathing in oxygen and breathing out CO2. So what we're going to do is take it apart piece by piece. It won't be that bad, I promise. And we're going to talk about how all of these processes work. But before we do that, let's talk about how energy gets harvested. Because basically, what you're doing with cell respiration is you're also taking glucose molecules, which is something that we ingest, and we're going to take the energy that's stored in those chemical bonds, and we're going to use that to make ATP. Because glucose doesn't do anything for us until we convert it into ATP. And that is the whole point of cell respiration. Okay, so there's two types of organisms we can kind of divide organisms into, autotrophs and heterotrophs. <clears throat> autotrophs are going to make their own energy. Heterotrophs have to ingest another organism to get their energy. So that's what we are, right, as a heterotroph. All right, an example of an autotroph would be like a plant. So digestion is going to happen for us when we ingest something else, and that's going to cause us to break things down using enzymes. And eventually, we'll get to those glucose molecules, and then we can actually use those glucose molecules in our cells to do cell respiration. So <clears throat> as you see here, I've defined cell respiration. Um, it occurs when the energy and the chemical bonds are harvested by breaking or forming bonds and shifting electrons from one molecule to the next. So what you're going to see happen is that there's this um, different stages, and there's going to be one stage where the electrons are jumping from place to place, and that's going to cause energy to be released. So if we look at the chemical reaction, you've got C6H12O6, which hopefully you remember is glucose, then you have oxygen. Those are the two things we're taking into our system to get energy. As a result, we're going to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of ATP and heat. Okay. Now there are going to be different forms of respiration. First type is aerobic respiration. The important thing you want to get out of this is it's going to use oxygen. Now when I say acceptor molecule, what's going to happen is these electrons that you're going to learn about are going to be bouncing from place to place, and eventually they need to end up somewhere. And so in aerobic respiration, they're going to end up with an oxygen. In anaerobic respiration, that's going to happen with an inorganic molecule other than uh, oxygen. And then there's fermentation, which is where that acceptor molecule that's going to accept those electrons is going to be an organic molecule. So what we do in our body is mostly going to be aerobic respiration, but at certain times we can actually switch over to fermentation. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so the whole point of this is to make ATP. And hopefully you remember that ATP has those three phosphates that are negatively charged. And what's going to happen is they don't want to be near each other. And so when we break that bond, it releases a lot of energy. And that's why ATP is such a good energy source. So what's going to happen is we need energy to actually put that last phosphate on to make ATP. And that's why we ingest glucose, and that's why we take in oxygen. Okay, so why do we have ATP? Well, we know it's for energy, but what do we use it to do? One of them could be mechanical work, so that could be muscle contractions, moving cilia, moving microvilli, those types of things. Also for transport work, remember we talked about active transport, and that requires ATP to happen. And then um, chemical work, so remember we talked about um, chemical reactions that require an input of energy, that's going to come in the form of ATP. So there's two ways that we can make ATP. One way is through what's called substrate level phosphorylation, and I'll show you a picture of that. And the other one is using ATP synthase. So if we go to my PowerPoint, all right, here's some pictures of some heterotrophs. That's lovely. Here is substrate level phosphorylation. So what's happening here, remember substrates react with enzymes, right? So you have your enzyme, and here's your substrate. Um, so notice here you have ADP, which means it has two phosphates, but it needs that third one. So what it's going to do is it's going to click into this enzyme next to another molecule that has a phosphate that it wants, and the enzyme is actually going to facilitate that reaction and make that third phosphate go on to the ATP. Now that is not a very common way for us to make ATP, as in we don't make a lot of ATP that way, but that's one of the ways. 
The other way is by using ATP synthase, and that's going to be what happens in aerobic respiration in the electron transport chain, which is the last part. So what's going to happen is hydrogen molecules are going to go through this purple thing that you see here that's called ATP synthase. And as they go through here, they're going to cause this to turn. And when it does, it's going to produce enough energy to actually put that last phosphate onto the ADP to make ATP. So the majority of ATP that we make is made that way. So in the next video, we're going to get into the stages of how this whole process works.